Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So today I'm here with Khadija again. Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam. I hope you all had a lovely Eid. Um, we definitely did. And if you haven't watched our Eid vlog, please go to our channel and you will find our Eid vlog to see what me and Khadija were up to. So Khadija, what are we going to talk about today? <laughs> Today's topic is about discrimination when it comes to marriage and like choosing your spouse and stuff. Yeah. It's not everyone, but sadly it happens quite a lot. Um, mm. And we thought we should like shed, shed, shed some light into well, it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Do you want to start it off? Okay, so let's get into it. So we talked about our last video on you know our conversations was about finding a partner and like okay now let's say you found your partner let's say you've got them either through only dating through whatever through whatever you found your partner now it's time for you to introduce your partner to your family and vice versa as well so it goes different ways for different people but we want to shed some light on the discrimination part that goes into that process where basically families say no to that potential husband or potential wife from someone because of a b c d e so Harija, yeah. come on um it falls under a lot so like sometimes you get a parent um saying they don't want to get you involved with the guy because they're not the same tribe as you or like when it comes to the religion, maybe they're Sunni and you're Shia, like, like no, it's not happening. Um, yeah, it, it's sad, but it happens a lot. Mm. <laughs> I know, uh, so, yeah, there are so many things that, first, it could also be, not even first, but one of the other things, it could be the person's pockets, like, let's say a guy goes and proposes or goes to see this girl's family or whatever, and their family be like, what does he do is he a doctor is he an accountant yeah. does he have money you know they look into that they look into what family are you from sometimes there's even like between the same um tribes or cultures there's like different families that don't get along from back in the day they have a history of feud and that oh, has yeah. been carrying yeah. on you know for like generations and generations yeah. so there's also that like whose son is that like whose daughter is that what family are they from so there's also that there's looking at skin color that happens a lot where we come from you know especially a lot, a lot. in the arabs or shiri community you know they look at you and let's say a darker person goes to try and marry someone from the either swahili or even an you know arab culture they'll be like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like it's likely for them no. to get a no like yeah this is something that when people are dating or when they want to marry someone they they have it at the back of their head which it shouldn't it's really be like sad. that it's really it's really really sad you find two it people is. they're so like in love and they want to be together you know like their happiness should be you know what matters not yeah what they look like you know end of the day that's your child and you're stopping them from marrying this person because they're dark skinned or they okay i can't say financially unstable but they're not rich like as long as they can take care of that person then that should be enough exactly. and also as long as like like with us we're muslims right as long as the person is muslim and you know they can guide you and stuff like that then that's all that should matter exactly. nothing else you know should play a part of that exactly and sadly it happens a lot Oh, that's not, so, so yeah, much, the main so much so to where girls run away from home and go and get married. True. And then you get these parents like disowning them for good <laughs> and wanting nothing to do with them. That like, happens a lot. To get married, really. Mm. You know. That happens a lot and a lot and a lot, and I get so many messages on Instagram throughout the years. I've been getting them. People are in these situations. You find someone has someone else that wants to marry them, but the family said no. They want to bring their brother. Or, sorry, not brother. 
don't come for me their cousin or a certain relative to be the one marrying yeah. their daughter or whatever because you know same family same culture same religion of course i understand religion that is something i respect everyone has their own opinions but for us muslims as a muslim woman you can only get married by a muslim you know man and a muslim man can marry ahlul kitab you know like whether it's a yeah. muslim or jew or a christian they want. <laughs> yeah they can they can marry women of the book but as for us we have to get married to a muslim as well so what we're saying is let's say a muslim man comes you know to our family mm. like assalamualaikum i want to i would like to marry your daughter right like as long as that person is a muslim and that person has good behavior those are the main things that should matter you know the rest of the things are a little nitpicking although although i would say as someone who's been married by a completely different culture <laughs> you know like i've been in a marriage where it's been the total opposite for those who yeah. don't know it's like my ex is from lithuania russia i don't want to talk much about him but there was initially there was also a religion um difference but you know he became a muslim before we got married um but the cultural difference was huge and i don't want to sit here and lie and say that it doesn't have any impact in your lives or in your marriage it does it does at some yeah. point you know at some point or at several points you will see the impacts of the differences um so as in some way i understand when parents are like careful when they're like okay it, it, it's better it's okay uh, there's these two things there's preference and there's discrimination you know yeah. when I, but then with that with that whole i'm um, sorry yeah I'll just cut you off it's fine with that whole getting married to someone from your different cu culture then that's up to you guys yeah to find the balance and make it work yeah definitely you know definitely it, it's, it's all about communication and balancing everything out and there's a lot of mixed couples that you know are making that it making work. it work not always exactly. gonna, not gonna work you know mm, mm, mm. as long as you guys have that communication and you know it's, it's about that but parents like cancelling it out all in all because that's what i'm saying this that's what i'm saying there's like discrimination gonna, you know, and there's yeah. like preference like discrimination is when yeah. they're like no it has to be someone from our culture but then there's a preference yeah. where they're like we think it would be better if you got to someone from our culture someone who understands our way of living and da, 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 because yeah. that let's not lie to each other culture is also part of our lives that's something that's been yeah, yeah. indoctrinated to us like ever since we were kids this is how we were brought up it's it's our way of yeah. life just like the religion is our way of life but culture doesn't go above the religion where you can mm -hmm. say that it's the most important compared to the religion the first thing and the most important yeah. thing is the person has to be muslim you know mm -hmm. the rest is like not, not so important no. oh, actually one other thing is yeah. important him being able to provide for you if he can't provide for you then he's not ready for marriage definitely that's, not definitely. A whole other topic. that's another topic <laughs> we have mentioned this before though in previous yeah. um conversations definitely yeah. um yeah. So here's the thing. Most of the stories that I hear is the woman that is worried that their family might not accept the man, right? Yeah. So okay. So for me, that's not my case <laughs> because yeah, when it came, yeah. I was said alhamdulillah yet. <laughs> <laughs> when it came to me getting married, like. I was not worried about like until now I'm not worried about what my family think in terms of like the culture or whatever anything like that whether the person is from a completely different country or continent like that's not something I worry about because in our family alhamdulillah we do have you know mixed couples right and it's even from my own mom like my mom was from like the western side of Kenya where the Muk and then my dad is from the coast side of Kenya she's a Luya my dad is a Bajun so back in the day you can't even imagine these two people actually meeting and getting married together you know like it was a very rare and it's still a very rare combination 
um, yeah. but the fact that that happened and I have seen like my family from my, mom, my mom's side they're not they don't discriminate anyone regardless of you know your religion um, your culture or whatever because mm -hmm. There's a lot of mixed mixed people <laughs> in my family, so for that yeah. reason, I'm not worried about that. Um, they would, I know they would definitely welcome the person, but here's the thing: I worry about myself, you know, yeah. like yeah. ever since I was a kid until now. Like when I go to my dad's side of the family, I don't feel like I really fit in because I don't speak. Kibayuni, which is my dad's language, you know, and even though people now speak Swahili, others speak English and stuff, but it's just that there's certain things that they do that's part of the culture, or you know, there's yeah, yeah. there's just the way they live, <laughs> this how they communicate that yeah. makes me feel like I'm lost, like am I in the right place? Yeah, yeah. I've never felt like I really belong in that. Whereas on my mom's side of the family, I can relate to everyone. You know, everyone is open-minded, everyone is free. They are sort of westernized, which is not the best way to describe it. But it's like open-minded people and they're just accepting, yeah. you know. So you don't feel like you're missing out. So I feel like I relate to that side more, even though I also don't speak my mom's language. I don't speak Luya. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't speak it. So in that sense, I feel like I am missing out. It's that that's my fault. I need to learn. But um, in terms of how they live, like I can hundred percent be comfortable there, relate with them, and stuff like that. So me being, I consider myself a Swahili person. So me being, you know, raised up in a Swahili environment, Swahili culture. But the fact that I don't like relate to my side my dad's side of the family which is more Swahili I feel like you know like automatically most of the times I'm inclined to find a partner or someone I like that's from my culture like from Swahili culture but yeah. then I feel like I will not it's be easier. accepted it's e I feel like it's easier so you, you want that ease you don't yeah want but at the same time I'm always worried like I will not even be accepted do you get me? Uh. Yeah, like, yeah. like, okay, back in the day, I did date someone, before I got married, I did date someone that was, you know, Swahili, was Bajuni, and I thought, you know, it was going to go somewhere, um, yeah. but that person crushed me proper, <laughs> and um, yeah, at that point, I just thought maybe I was not Swahili enough for them, or I was not Bajuni, yeah. because he never introduced me to his family, every time I kept asking, it was like, he was dodging the bullet so i just felt like maybe i would not fit in their family yeah. and and because yeah. because ever since i came to this country as well i was not raised by my I've, i haven't been raised by my dad's side of the family really so it's my mom's yeah. side of the family and they're like christians they're not muslims so i was thinking maybe i'm not muslim enough as well you know like I was asking yeah. myself, am I Muslim enough? Am I Swahili enough? Am I like I just didn't feel enough, you know? So I just feel like yeah. I wouldn't fit in. I would be discriminated against and stuff like that. So until today, which is something I'm trying to, I, I mean, it reached a point where I was like, you know what? F it, you know? Like, yeah. My parents, they came together. They made me. Um, I am different, I am unique, I should embrace that, that's what makes me, why should I try so much to fit in when I was born to stand yeah. out, you know, so I started like accepting myself the way I am, and I'm like, if anyone, you know, if I meet anyone, like, I'm praying that the family accepts, accepts me for who I am, yeah. but then sometimes, yeah. like, I might meet someone who is a completely different person, maybe Somali, not that different person, but different like culture, maybe Somali or something yeah. else, and then again, that comes in, I'm like, if my own people, or <laughs> I felt like they didn't yeah. accept me, what about this? It's, it's, a, it's a hard situation. It is. It's, it's, not, it's not easy, and I feel like our parents should like leave that to the past and just be with us now you know and they should put our happiness first rather than sometimes it's mostly ego as well like, like i know i can't say this to like a parent and say it's your ego that's making me not want to get you know if it, it, it but it is you yeah. know 
and it's it's really really sad you get people um not getting married or getting married the girl being so scared and listen to their parents and get married to someone else she's married to someone else but she's thinking, thinking the about the other person get married. like you know it's yeah. She's totally in love with this other guy, but now she's married to this guy to please her parents. But you know, do you it's, feel it's really, really sad? Do you feel um, us in our situation as single moms, we are discriminated upon when you do get a new spouse, like when you do get in, someone interested? A like. lot, a lot, a lot of um, our in our Swahili community, a lot of parents they do look down on us, like. Not all of them, I won't say all of them, but if you get like a guy, let's say he's never been married before, um, the, the mum will be like, ah, and I'll talk to her, oh, she's got kids. <laughs> or you get your own parents asking you, are they going to accept you? You have yeah. kids, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> why should my kids be a problem? You know, we're in love. So, like, what does... And even it's not just about having kids. Even if even if you were just married before, let's say you didn't have any kids, mm -hmm. like that yeah. always it's you the know. It's that you've been married before. Mm -hmm. They want virgins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's, honest, it's, it's honestly hard out there for us. Honestly. It like, is. It is. Um, you know, we do get discriminated upon. Based on our situation, a lot, a based lot, on a lot, a lot, and you get scared to even jump the jump the broom because if you do, you're like, oh my god, what if this doesn't work out? Yeah. What if I get divorced again? And if I get divorced and I get married that again, time, people are gonna be talking, talking da, da, about da, da, da. it. And all of those thoughts are in your head because, like, I don't know. It's the society is telling you stuff. This, 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 and then you start thinking of, and I'm like, oh god, you know, mm. it pushes you back instead of making you actually want to get married, get married you not want to get married mm. oh people are gonna chat like i got married oh like what, you're, you're married second time round you're in the marriage now and the marriage is toxic you're scared to walk out of it because people are gonna chat you yeah know? i mean i've been in situations where the guys are like oh i want to marry you and stuff like i'm serious about this and then they're like, oh, I don't know how to tell my parents. Well, don't you know how to tell your parents? I don't know how to tell my parents that, you know, you were married before or you have a kid. Like, just tell them. <laughs> You're the one that's in love with me. You're the one that's going to live with me. Not your parents, you know, not your siblings. Just tell them parents, how you friends. tell them everything it's else. It's me and you. <laughs> but you um, it's, it, it is, uh, it's, it's not easy. This whole discrimination thing happens in so many ways and it's sad, it's sad because we, when it comes to that, like, we're literally throwing the whole aspect of being Muslims out of the window. When the Quran even says, you know, you are brought up in different, you know, um, different tribes, different skin colors, different whatever, different people to come and mix together. Yeah. So for, for you to keep you know your family to yourself or your culture to yourself that's not really being you know you get girls getting pregnant outside wedlock all because they didn't want their parents didn't want them to get married and then you get people calling her malaya or hajatulia or da, 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 when in fact the parents didn't allow them to get married if they allowed them to get married that wouldn't have happened you know yeah. three people are in love <laughs> And you're coward, man. There's bound to be some some sort of spark going on, you know? Like oh. So what's the, what's our message? What's our message to our generation and what's our message to parents? Well, the parents should be <clears throat> looking at the child's feelings first, you know, before anything. Um I'm not saying don't look at the background of the guy, yeah? Look look if he's respectable. If he's got his religion, yeah, and if he can provide for your daughter, those are the only things that you should be mainly concerned about. Any other thing shouldn't be a concern, you know. Dear parents, that's it. That's that's to our parents and to yeah. to like. Actually, it, it's actually haram to say no to someone for no good reason. It is. It's it's actually haram. So. <laughs> To our generation, to young lots, you guys want to get married and your parents say no to you. 
if you're brave enough, you could tell them, you know, if you're, what you're doing is haram, you know. <laughs> you could start with that. <laughs> no, 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 don't start with that. Start with a normal <laughs> conversation. I know at first they're going to be mad at you. They're probably not going to want to hear it. But with time, if you just keep, you know, not, don't just take no for an answer and they don't give you a good explanation. If the explanation is not good, sometimes, of course, you might say their parents, they're saying this to try and protect you and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. if you don't see yourself with anyone else but this person, and this person is really good for you, like, just go to your family and say, you know, try. Basically, you really have to try. If you cannot have... This is why we, we're bringing this conversation to you guys. Because it's not something we really talk about in our communities or in our families mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, yeah. you really... The I'm only way to go on about to it to parents, is to talk. You know? If you can't do yeah. it, find a relative that you're comfortable talking to that can talk to your parents about it. So that they can sit down and have a decent conversation. And they can explain their concerns why they don't think this person is good for you. And if they are valid concerns, you have to sit down and reflect. Okay, my parents say this and that. If it's not, you know, keep bringing it to the table over and over. Hopefully, you know, at some point their hearts will soften. They will see, okay, what we're doing isn't actually, isn't actually Islamic and or we're actually being racist for no reason. Mm -hmm. You know, they might recognize that's their problem. Um, or they might just see, okay, we, we were fussing about this thing, but it's not actually a big deal. You know, as long as our child is going to be happy, that's the most important thing. So, but the most important thing we have to do is sit down and communicate. That's the only way we can resolve this with our families. And hopefully yeah. this also starts or continues this conversation in our society so that we can all be better people. You know, because the consequences of not letting your daughter or your son marry the person they truly want, the consequences are huge. That's when, the, the, you know, there's a lot of divorces because you're forcing people to get married into marriages they didn't really want to be in in the first place. It doesn't last. They get divorced. Another one example, as Khadija said, is someone getting um, and, and people eloping, mostly girls. Mm -hmm. They're eloping so that they can go be with their potential husbands or their actual husbands there's the getting married um, getting pregnant out of wedlock and there's just so much more which we could actually avoid by just having this conversation yeah, yeah. like um the, the best thing you, the, like we're not saying parents should advise we're not saying you shouldn't advise you should advise and tell them why you don't think this marriage will be a right move for you da, 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 da. but they end decision the final decision should be the girl's decision mm -hmm. whether she wants to step into that marriage or not because end of the day whether the marriage is going to work or not is for her to deal with and you know not for you and not for anyone else but for her she'll deal with it when it comes to the like the, the that's it really you know mm -hmm. advice if she listen she'll listen if she doesn't listen then She'll face whatever drama is coming her way or whatever happiness is coming her way. That's it. Yeah. You guys have any input on this um, stories, interesting stories you want to share with us? Like, you can put it down below or you can DM us and, you know, we can talk. We can talk. Yeah, yeah. If you have anything to contribute to this conversation, anything you would like to say, you know, let us know if you want us to talk about something like this in deeper, if you have something you really want us to talk about into details as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe future conversations, or if you have any suggestions, let us know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. We hope this has been somehow useful, somehow insightful. And um, yeah, whoever is in this position, we literally wish you all the best you know and may Allah make it easy for you so thank you guys for watching and bye bye bye